Good morning everyone. It is Friday the 26th of February and we are out on a glorious morning taking Mr. Kane for a walk. Isn't it beautiful? Just a little bit later on in the morning. It's now 10 past 11 and I'm sitting in the car park of the Tekka in Aberdeen. So it's like our conference centre and this is where they're doing the vaccinations for COVID. So because Ewan has got really bad asthma, um, he's in the high risk category for COVID. So he's getting vaccinated early. So obviously he's in his thirties, um, the same bracket as I am now in. So I'm not getting vaccinated for a while yet because I've got, I haven't got any um, pre-existing conditions that would make me higher risk. So I'll get vaccinated along with the rest of my age group. Um, which is obviously totally fine. But Ewan, he is getting vaccinated alongside sort of the age group of the sort of 60s, um, just because of his asthma. Um, so they're in the UK, I don't know what they're doing everywhere else, but in the UK, they're going by um, age group, age bracket. So the elderly get done first, working down sort of decade by decade. And obviously the essential workers are getting done um, as well because they are exposed to it on a daily basis. So... To be honest, so far, the only people I know that have had it are like sort of nurses and things, um, care workers, that kind of stuff um, of like of my age group. And um, I've now know some relatives that are getting done um, that are older. So, um, yeah, so Ewan's getting done today. His mum's getting done in a couple of weeks. Um, his auntie, I think, was done the other week. Um, my stepdad's getting done pretty soon, but he's got a lot of um, pre-existing conditions as well. So... Um, yeah, so he's, he's definitely higher risk. So, so yeah, that is, uh, that's what I'm doing. So I have, uh, come away from work, um, a bit early this morning, obviously to drop him here. I'm going to wait, pick him up, drop him home and then go and feed the bobster. So, oh, so Dylan's been ridden every day this week, apart from Tuesday because it was pee and rain and... I didn't really want to get completely frozen when I was still coughing. It's been two weeks today since I started feeling a bit crap. Um, had a full week of being nearly bedridden. And then this week I've been definitely on the mend, but I'm still not right, which is insane. So it's like, like I say, it's just two weeks today since I first started feeling a little bit gross. I don't know what kind of bug I've had, but it's been bloody awful. Um, so yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely knocked me whatever this is um i mentioned in a previous vlog that i've got tested as well and it's not covid so that's good to know um but yeah so i'm gonna go up and feed dylan after this get him done and then work for like another five hours i think i've got left to do today yeah that sounds about right i've worked two and a half this morning so i need to work oh i'm shaking the camera a lot it's balanced on my steering wheel um yeah so i worked two and a half hours this morning and i was really productive actually um, I tend to be productive in shorter sprints than I do if I'm working a long time. So I did well this morning and then, like I say, I've got five hours to do the rest of the day. Just so I can break even on my hours for the week. Yeah, I'm going to feed Dylan today. It's kind of a shame. It's a beautiful day. I actually would have quite liked to ride, but I take uh, Kane into the yard with me um, a couple times a week just to give you and a bit of peace to work because he's a bit of a menace. Um, and I've only done that once this week. So I'm going to take him up today and then ride both days of the weekend. I think that's my plan. And the weather's meant to be really, really good. So might as well take advantage of having more time at the weekend to ride than having a quick one today. So that is, uh, that's what I'm doing. I keep getting distracted looking at people um, going in and out of the, te uh, the uh, vaccination area. So yeah. I am just chilling here. I've got my little pal with me because we're going to go to the yard after. He's looking very excited about life. And I'm going to go and read a bit of my book while I'm waiting for you in, I think. It's been another it's been another kind of slow reading month to be honest. I finished an audiobook. I finished my audiobook and I finished another book that I can't for the life of me remember no nah, I have no idea I'm sure there's another book I finished this month that I've forgotten about and um it's not a good sign is it and I've been reading The Coven for a couple of weeks uh by Lizzie Fry uh it's an art copy that I've got 
but I'm pretty sure it's out today possibly out today um and i'm not sure the dates are always changing for releases and it's hard to keep track but anyway yeah so i'm reading that and i thought i would have finished it by now it's weird it's one of those books that when i'm reading it i enjoy it but when i put it down i don't have this pull to pick it up again but when i force myself to pick it up i read loads of it and i really enjoy it i'm at least halfway through and like i say it's it's good while i'm reading it but for some weird reason I don't feel a pull to it and I don't know why um maybe it's because I'm not really invested in any of the characters I don't know if that's what what it is like all of them are kind of blah like it's a book about women having witchcraft and basically the US has declared witchcraft um illegal and all the world's kind of follows suit and there's like a there's a <clears throat> there's a group of people called the Sentinels, it's like an organisation that hunts witches and they're, they're trying basically to round them up and put them into camps or there's kill orders on them. Um, so it's just, it's, 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 it's a really interesting concept. Um, it's like misogyny gone wild, basically. And like if men are finding out their wives are witches, we've actually got men that are killing their husbands. Ugh, men that are killing their husbands? We've got men that are killing their wives to prove that they're not involved or didn't know or whatever. And it's like, oh my God. Um, but anyway, so basically the there's three types of witches. There's kitchen witches who just kind of potter and do little potions and tinctures and stuff like that. There's crystal witches who can use crystal to kind of harness their power and they're kind of like um and that so there's they're the ones that kind of are being put into camps and then there are elemental witches who can control one of earth fire water or air and they're the most powerful and the most rare and there's kill orders on them because they're considered the most dangerous um and the power, you can't take the power away from them. Like with kitchen witches, you take away their cauldrons and you take away their cauldrons and their little spell books and stuff like that, then they are kind of de-armed. Disarmed? Disarmed, not de-armed. Um, and then you've got crystal witches who have innate power, but it it's easier for them to focus and use it if they've got a crystal. So if you take away all their crystals, they are not disarmed, but they're severely impaired of using their power. Whereas elemental witches can just tap into their power at any time and you can't actually stop them or reduce their power, um, <clears throat> which is why they just want to kill them. So, yeah, basically the crux of it is the government's essentially against witches, women's lives aren't great. They're basically going back to like Puritan style beliefs. Women are in the home, they don't have careers, they're not really allowed to do anything, they're there to support the men. And then obviously the ones that are have magical abilities or have had family that have had magical abilities. They're related to witches, but they don't actually have powers of their own. They're called legacies. All of these people are basically criminals just for existing. Um, so like the concept's really interesting. And you can obviously relate it to other things like, you know, persecution of other minority groups and stuff. You can basically relate it to that. You could swap out the word witches for another minority group and the politics would all relate so that part of it's really interesting um and i think it's quite powerful because it gets the message across very well but yeah i'm not really sure where the plot's going i am assuming there's going to be some kind of coup and they're going to try and overthrow the government or the sentinel or what because like the president is anti-witch um the previous one wasn't but this one is and it's like I don't know if they're just going to do a try and take over the government or prove witches aren't evil I don't know how they're going to do that because it seems to be such a deeply held belief in non-witches that witches are evil I I don't know I don't know I, I assume the only real way is there's going to be some sort of confrontation with people in power um, and I'm, I'm honestly saying that part of it's not that interesting to me um and the and the characters aren't pulling me in the, we've met some witches now other witches like in a coven a hidden coven and they're quite interesting they have a lot more they've harnessed their power and they're a lot more individual and i'm like oh they're quite cool but the main characters of chloe 
who's like a young witch who's just discovered she's a witch. Um, Adelita, who was a witch in one of the camps, prison type places that's on the run. A rogue sentinel officer who was with the bad guys but now isn't. And the father of the young girl um, are like the main characters. And I'm not, I don't really care about any of them that much. Like the rogue sentinel officer is obviously trying to like seek redemption for being part of that group. I get his motivations, that's fair. The crystal witch, um, I'm not really sure. She's just kind of like tagging along for the ride at the moment. She's <clears throat> obviously against what's happening, but I don't really, I don't really know what her purpose is. The father of the, the young girl that's the witch, he was one of these people who's not against witches, but he was, like he wasn't actively against them and being discriminatory in that way, but it was more of a passive, like he wasn't doing anything to help the situation. So you could argue he's playing the part of like, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement recently, he's the person who's not, who's not an active racist that's going out and beating up black people or stabbing them or protesting against their existence or, or you know, he's not, he's not, he's not being horrible in that way. He's not like trying to lock them up for their existence. But then he's also like not standing up for what's right. He's not trying to change the situation. He's just sort of like, right, that's the status quo. You know, we live the way we can. Because it doesn't affect him really. Until he's found out his daughter's a witch, this didn't really affect him. And he was just very passive about everything. So there's a lot of thought process going through about how he's dealing with this stuff, um, <clears throat> which is quite interesting. But as a character, I can't say I'm hugely, hugely bothered by him, but I would say his his thoughts are a bit more interesting than the others. Chloe, the young witch who's coming to her powers, I'm disappointed with her character because I thought she would be more of a character than maybe maybe she will be maybe in the next half of the book she'll kind of come into it a bit more but at the moment she's not very likable and um she's not a strong character she's powerful as a witch but i don't really i don't know there's nothing there i don't i do i think now that i'm talking about it I'm trying to understand what it is I'm not enjoying. I think it's the characters are not strong enough for me. They're not developed enough. I don't get why they're doing what they're doing other than, I don't know, there's just no pull there. So the concept's interesting. I like because of recent issues. I think it's an interesting book to read. But yeah, the second half of the book is going to have to pull it together because at the moment it's probably in my head sitting at about a three and a half star. But if it pulls out the bag with the second half, we could maybe go up to a four. I think that's, I think we're sitting in the middle of a three and a four at the minute. Going by gut, because obviously I've been trying to use Copile for my ratings, but that's where my head's putting it at the minute. So, and I like to see how much my, my head puts things and how much it is, how close it is to Copile. And it usually is, so that's, that's cool. So that's kind of where I'm sitting with that one. And I've started reading, after I listened to another audiobook, which is called Hard Pushed by Leah Hazard. And this is basically a midwife doing her version of the This Is Gonna Hurt by Adam Kay, which is a non-fiction book that I really enjoyed. It was, um, he's a, he was a gynecologist and, or was it Obs and Gyne? Obs and Gyne he worked in and he had lots of kind of funny stories about his training and, um, the patients he saw and stuff and she's doing the same kind of thing but with midwifery so I'm enjoying that it's at the moment less comedic than this is gonna hurt but I kind of expected that so that's not a shock and it's not bothering me um so yeah I'm listening to that I'm probably halfway through actually it's quite an easy listen um and I am interested so that's quite good and I've also started reading A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Um, I'm very late to the game here. The third book is out of this trilogy and I've just 
jumped on the bandwagon now but it's one of those things that I just I always kind of like yeah I'm gonna read that at some point and never got around to it and now that like I've had my birthday and I've got some birthday money and stuff I'm gonna buy some of the books that are on my TBR that I've just not bought for whatever reason um Ewan bought me the A Curse of Dark and Lonely so I've started reading that and I'm enjoying that so far that's a very easy read at the moment as well so yeah that's kind of my reading updates I've been yapping to the camera now for like 20 minutes it's kind of mental um I thought Ewan would be done by now um but apparently not and I kind of need a pee so <laughs> I hope he's quick because I need to drop him off home and then drive another 20 minutes to the yard so I hope um I don't have to get out of the house and pee because that would just be inconvenient um but I'm gonna go because I keep getting weird looks from people because I'm filming so I'm gonna head off and catch you later bye be nice to her. Get in. Him. Maybe you can't. <laughs> but I'm not really sure. It's like it's a it's really big and I don't know. He wants her play so bad. Oh. She's not running away though. No. Yes, good boy. Hello everyone. It is now Friday evening. Uh, finally finished work, which I'm so chuffed about. I had to work off by six to make up the time I spent feeding Dylan and taking you in for his vaccine. So that was fine. Um, got through the day, no bother. Checking where the dog was. Oh, mum, are you cooking? Um, he is my shadow now because I'm cooking, so that's fine. I'm going to swap hands because this left-handed cooking thing was not working. I am making some food because I'm absolutely starving. Um, we're having chilli tonight. It's a recipe that I've gotten kind of off of HelloFresh, but I don't buy their version anymore because I can make it cheaper. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm just cooking up the sausage meat and... Um, get cracking with dinner so I think I've got I've got the recipe card here so that's kind of what we're having and I've just written down like I've just written down how much is actually in everything because HelloFresh obviously they give you the recipes but they don't tell you what's in a sachet like the recipe will be like add one sachet of this and it's like that only works with the pre pre measured out sachets so I write down what's actually in the amounts of everything when I get the recipe for the first time. So I know I can make it again in future if I need to. Bit cheating, but it's fine. I still occasionally get HelloFreshes, but I just find them more than I'm willing to pay really for convenience, I suppose. Um, but maybe I'm just being cheap. <laughs> um, anyway. So here we have our sausage meat browning. So that's that's that and then the next step is adding spices I need to go check now, the chili is almost ready beans have gone in the chopped tomatoes and the spices they're all there so it's looking proper tasty and we have a poochie poo who really wants to get a little bit of supper you've already been fed Canaan. He's literally watching you and drink pineapple juice. Like, why would you get pineapple juice? Hala. It's a good thing you're so cute. It's a good thing you're so cute because you're horrible. You're a horrible little fart. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Get it. Sit your bum. Canaan. Sit. Canaan. Good boy. Yes. You'll get something. We always get something. So, it's a bit later on again. We've eaten our chilli and it was so good. You know when you're starving and whatever you eat just tastes amazing? That was kind of like, that was kind of the situation. So, we ate food and then we watched WandaVision, which was so good. This is like the episode, like, describing how Westview came to be or 
Wanda's west view, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's how like the sitcom bit started. Um, oh, I had to take my arm down. That was a that was not a fun angle for my arm. Um, yeah, so it was the kind of <clears throat> origin of WandaVision, essentially, episode. And it was really, really good. And I feel immensely sad for Wanda. Like, I don't know why we're shocked that she's a little bit loopy after everything. But, um, yeah, really, really good episode. And then the dog had a massive, the dog had a massive zoomy and was skidding about the floor and going absolutely mental. And we took him for a walk. And that's you and taking him out for another pee. And uh, yeah, so it's coming up to about nine o'clock at night and that's kind of what we've been up to. So I will catch you later on. Good morning, everyone, from me and Pooch. It is like just after half nine. We've had a bit of a sleepy start this morning because someone, someone was not a very good sleeper last night. Yes, so someone woke up for his PB about five-ish, five and five, five, and then didn't want to go back to sleep because he was a monkey dog and decided he was gonna cry and whimper on and off for like two hours. Yo, yo. So we waited till about seven and then he got his breakfast because he's not allowed to get his breakfast until it's like a human time of the day. So he got his breakfast about seven and then we decided we we're gonna sleep another couple of hours because <coughs> we were tired. And uh, yeah, so now we've had another couple of hours sleep and what have you done to this toy? And it's now half past nine and we've not really achieved much so far. We were gonna be going up to the beach super early for a walk, but yeah, we're running behind a couple, like a couple of hours now, but that's fine. We can uh, we can get that back. Um, so yeah, we are planning to grab some breakfast and then go and take him for an early walk at the beach because it's a beautiful morning. And we want to get there before it gets busy because pretty nice weather it means it's gonna be everybody's gonna come out, and we don't want to be in a busy area, obviously for obvious reasons. Um, so we're going to do that nice and early and then we're going to nip to Asda to get a couple of bits and bobs that we need. We can't wait till our next online shop for. Um, and yeah, and then um, it will be carrying on with the rest of the day. But I will catch up with you once we are ready to go for our... Got it's such a nice morning. I did. Hey everyone, that's a bit later on today. We've took Pooch to the beach. He's still so unsure about the waves. It's like they come towards him and he just runs. I'm like, so much for being a water dog. Um, but yeah, he enjoyed that. And then we went to the pet shop and got him his toy. I'll put in a little clip here of him playing with his wobble ball. Someone got a new toy. One of these puzzle toys for dogs. You put the food in the top and then they can like move it around to get the toys out, the treats out. Can you do it, Kanan? Can you do it? Come on, you can do it. Play with it. No. You go back. There we go. Is that fun? Look at the little tail. Is he happy? That's not quite how it's meant to work, that's it. Come on. Yeah, you got one out, look. Good boy. This is fun. So that was fun. He enjoyed that. And he also got some goat's ears as well, which smell like really stinky feet. They're disgusting, but he seems to like that too. So I'm just going to deal with the cheesy smell in the house. <clears throat> Rancid. Um, but anyway, he's happy. So I'm heading off to the yard now to help one of my friends do some jumps 
and then I'll take Dylan for a little hack. Um, I'm going to try and up his hacking time this weekend um, and next week um, to, you know, kind of about 40 minutes plus, um, maybe get him up in the field and things like that. A lot of the water will have drained away after all that rain and snow and stuff, so it should be better footing in the field. So I'm going to go take him to do that. I've got... I'm really chuffed with my makeup today. Like... That's looking nice. Um, I, I'm doing a I'm doing a little clip kind of for an elf video. So I was just um, trying out a new palette that I got. This is the pumpkin spice elf bite size palette, which is really nice. Um, I've been wearing the elf camo CC cream for the last few days, and I really like it. This is the satin flawless finish or whatever it's called. Um, and I like this one better because the camo CC cream is just too high coverage for me. I don't actually like that much coverage um and this one's more natural looking and i think i like it better but always nice to try new foundations so anyway um i'm gonna head up to the yard now because apparently it's getting busy but it will be because it's a nice day but i'm hoping to just get dylan and get him away from the, the main yard just so i'm not around anybody basically but uh, yeah i will catch up with you a bit later it is literally the most beautiful day today absolutely stunning just helped my friend do some jumping and her horse was amazing so that was cool and now I'm heading off to get to Dilly Pop. Go for a hack, it should be good fun. End of the world. Someone's been a whiny boy. Someone really hates the car. Anyway, good morning everyone. It is now Sunday, it's the 28th of February. It's been such a quick month. I can't believe February is over already. I mean, what the hell? Like, how is it How is it coming into March of 2021 already? I don't get how time passes, I really don't. Um, so it is another beautiful day and we're heading to meet up with you and mom and Luna. Cause we kind of, we, we're going to try and get back into the routine of walking every couple of weeks. Stop being a whingy pants. Yes. So yes, we're gonna go meet up with them and have a little play with the pooches. Yes. Um, so that should be good fun. And then I'll be going back up to the yard later to see Dylan and riding again. So yeah, good weather is so awesome. You can actually do so much with the day. Even if it's not that warm, it's beautiful and sunny and dry. Whoop whoop. Gorgeous day, a little bit chillier than it was yesterday, but can't complain with weather like this in February, certainly not. We have some naked ponies enjoying fresh air and the sun on their backs. They all look like they're sleeping. Hey Rio, hi handsome, and Aero, also looking like he's sleeping. <laughs> and Buttons and Herman all having their naps. <sighs> what a gorgeous day. Hey Dylan! Did you see me coming down? Love this boy. Beautiful hack with my boy. I do love coming to the field. Isn't it awesome, Mr. Man? Oh, 
so much fun to be had this year, hopefully. So, another update for the evening. Uh, we were planning on cooking um, a new recipe tonight, but it didn't go to plan. So, we have ordered pizza. Kaden! Okay then, no, don't lick my leg. Off my leg, get off my leg. The glorious, glorious pepperoni pizza. So I've had a wonderful bath, mostly interrupted by dog. And we're now gonna watch some TV and eat some pizza. And dog's gonna cry in his crate because he's in there because he won't stop trying to get the pizza. So there he will stay. Mm -hmm. What? She's being cute. Hey everyone, that is the end of the day. So we scarfed our pizzas and we watched the first episode of season two of His Dark Materials. Came out ages ago, but we never quite got around to watching it. And yeah, I've just been pottering around, getting ready for the next day. And yeah, that's us off to bed. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna end the vlog here and I will catch up with you again next week. Bye for now. This is the fascination with dogs and windows. <laughs>